Now Motor Vehicles Act. is basically covering a large area of transportation on road. It covers all kinds of transports, public transport, private transport, goods carriages, passenger carriages, private vehicle and all these are defined. What is called what? If you see section 2 you'll find various kinds of vehicles being defined even axle vehicle private passenger vehicle stage carrier public passenger vehicle public goods vehicle heavy vehicle medium vehicle light vehicle everything is defined under the definition column but Chapter 2, 3, 4 are primarily on certain norms being fixed. For example, Chapter 2 deals with the driving license. Like earlier, people used to ride horses. Since motor vehicles being introduced, the word riding was interchanged with driving. Now driving is a skill. Most of the people get confused between the word driving and operation of a motor vehicle. See, you can learn operating a motor vehicle with an hardly a week if you are a fast grasper you can learn the operation in two days also how to put a gear how to operate clutch where is the brake how to put accelerator this is operation of the vehicle but not driving driving is a skill altogether different from the knowledge of operation of a vehicle operation of the vehicle is the first step that you know how to this how to operate this machine where is the accelerator where is the gear where is the clutch how to operate this how to get it moving but driving includes a mental element into it now operation is purely physical that you have to put this gear to there you have to remove the clutch put some pressure on the accelerator, the machine starts moving. The propulsion happens. But driving includes a mental skill into it. How? You got to know how to operate this machine. Machines start moving. But then comes the duty to care. The duty to take care and duty not to be negligent. That this movement must not create an injury to the person or property. And that duty to take care includes that you have to be very careful to see that rear view mirrors of both sides including the center one of inside the vehicle is all in place where you could look around even the back of you all the windows have been cleanly washed so that you can look across the windshield can give you a wide look that nobody is there in the front if you intend to take a turn you must take care to have a look on the rear view mirror that where somebody at the back is not coming or crossing so that you should not indulge into an accident. Your speed should be such that you must be absolutely under control at every given point of time so that the Butterfield versus Forrester incident does not happen. You should not be so much into speeding that despite knowledge that somebody is there on the 
a road you could not control your vehicle all this is inclusive into that mental element which is coupled with the operational knowledge called driving now think that driving is attached so much importance into motor vehicles act that the liability is put more on the driver now if there is an accident if you have experiences of watching some minor accidents also on road which you all must have because in India we keep having all this ek bada kamal ka rule hai unwritten that the larger the vehicle the greater the responsibility isn't it स्कूटर अगर कार से टक्कर हो जाए तो कार वाले की गलती कार की ट्रक से हो जाए तो ट्रक वाले की गलती पैदल चलने वाले की साइकिल वाले से हो जाए तो साइकिल वाले की गलती वी हैव दिस अनरिटन रूल दैट वी प्रज्यूम दैट द लाइटर द व्हीकल द ही एस्केप्स रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी लार्जर द व्हीकल द लार्जर द रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी you have to take care and why this concept has been developed because the larger the machine you are operating law presumes that you should be more careful because you are the one who could cause more damage if a pedestrian hits another pedestrian hardly there would be any damage but if a pedestrian is hit by a scooter who has a machine power into it then definitely that pedestrian may have a larger damage that's why the responsibility is on the operator of a machine you must be more careful under torts there is a very interesting rule called rule of strict liability you've heard of it you must be knowing the leading case of it which one rylan versus fletcher i'm proud of you very good rylan versus fletcher developed rule of strict liability but you know that the rule of strict liability has a lot of exceptions isn't it and uh, any exception of your knowledge west major is one of the uh, exceptions to rule of strict liability i'm sorry and that is west major uh, you want to give translations of it that is west major act of god one of the rule of strict liability's exception is contributory negligence isn't it but the motor vehicles act of india has gone ahead of rule of strict liability and has introduced rule of absolute liability under section 140 of the motor vehicles act 1988 rule of absolute liability has no exceptions rule of strict liability has exceptions as you pointed out a rule of absolute liability is beyond exceptions so therefore see 
the concept which developed under the common law courts of England, as I said, that these common law court judgments gradually found place in statutes also, because they appealed to the common sense of the larger public. And therefore, the statutory law of India went ahead of the rule of strict liability and created a rule of absolute liability under section 140, which has developed a theory called no fault theory. The theory called no fault theory under section 140. What is no fault theory? That the moment an accident occurs, and is reported to the authorities and lands up in the court and if the result of the accident is death or permanent disablement of the victim, the result is death or permanent disablement of the victim then the law says under section 140 that the victim must be compensated by the owner of the vehicle and be careful to notice this we are not even talking of insurer we are talking of to be compensated by the owner of the vehicle without going into the trial or inquiry of finding out whose fault was the, there in accident. No fault of the owner, still he is liable to compensate to the tune of rupees 50,000 in the case of death and 25,000 in the case of permanent disablement. Instant. The law says we'll, we shall see whose fault was that later. At the moment, due to this accident, a death has occurred, pay 50,000. A permanent disablement has occurred, pay 25,000. And then we'll see. This is rule of absolute liability, no defense. no exception like rule of strict liability there are exceptions here there's no exception absolute liability if you have been part of an accident an owner of a vehicle instantly you have to pay at the cause of death 50,000 in the cause of permanent disability 25,000 by the year 1994 the parliament thought that this is inadequate. Law needs to be evolved. And evolution in law is a very, very regular process. Mind you, never rest on the laurels of your achievement into exams. That's my Guru Mantra to you all. If you are ever intending to be a practicing lawyer of tomorrow never sit on your laurels because law is fast changing a very very evolutive process it evol evolves every day I was just talking to your professor that I've been into the practice for more than 25 years and no day goes when I do not read at least two hours per day irrespective of my briefs, pure law, and I still feel that a lot to be learned. Because law is evolving, and the moment I sit on my laws that I've won so many cases, I've achieved this much, that much, I may be lagging behind because law must have gone ahead.